Now that we know that it was not in fact a pandemic of the unvaccinated, now that we know that Ukraine is not actually winning the war against Russia, it could be time to revisit some of the other slogans we've been assured are true and ordered to repeat. Are they in fact true? Did, for example, a racist white cop actually murder a man called George Floyd, a civil rights leader, in Minneapolis on Memorial Day of 2020? Now, we've been told that that happened, told it relentlessly for more than three years. So at this point, we've been told it so much that pretty much everybody seems to believe it. And because everyone does kind of believe it, a small group of people has been allowed to make massive changes to American society. They include, but are not limited to, decriminalizing stealing, defunding the police, adding a new federal holiday to the calendar called Juneteenth, the ceasing of hiring all white men in corporate America, and of course, significantly, they also sent a cop called Derek Chauvin to prison for more than 40 years. He would be the racist white devil who murdered George Floyd. But the question is, did he actually murder George Floyd? And the answer is, well, no, he didn't murder George Floyd. And we're not guessing about that. We know it conclusively, thanks to a new court case now underway in Hennepin County, Minnesota. The case was brought by a prosecutor there called Amy Sweezy. She's suing her boss. So the case is not actually about George Floyd or Derek Chauvin, but it tells you an awful lot about both of them. In her deposition, which you should read, Amy Sweezy describes a conversation that she had with the county medical examiner, Andrew Baker, right after George Floyd died. Quote, I called Dr. Baker early that morning to tell him about the case and to ask him if he would perform the autopsy on Mr. Floyd. Sweezy recalls all this under oath in the deposition. Quote, he called me later in the day on that Tuesday and he told me that there were no medical findings that showed any injury to the vital structures of Mr. Floyd's neck. There were no medical indications of asphyxia or strangulation. Oh. In other words, George Floyd, according to the official autopsy, was not murdered. He died instead of what we used to call natural causes, which in his case would include decades of drug use, as well as the fatal concentration of fentanyl that was in his system on his final day. So this was not a killing. It was yet another narcotics OD in a country that courts more than 100,000 of them every year. The medical examiner clearly understood that and in fact articulated it. And Sweezy explains. He said to me, she recalls in the deposition, Amy, what happens when the actual evidence doesn't match up with the public narrative that everyone's already decided on? And then he said, quote, this is the kind of case that ends careers. In other words, everyone lied about it from the very beginning. The people who knew the truth hid the truth and allowed the revolution to proceed. Now they've been exposed, now we know the truth. What happens next? Well, they're gonna ignore it. The Biden administration just issued a long purple statement celebrating George Floyd's birthday. He's a martyr despite the fact we know that he was not murdered. And by the way, Derek Chauvin is still languishing in jail for the rest of his life. So how do we respond to this? How do we respond to the truth once we have it? Well, Vince Everett Ellison seemed like a good man to ask. He's the author of Crime, Inc. He joins us now. Vince, thanks so much for coming on. So as with so many other stories, the oh, origin of, me, of COVID, oh, it's, it's a blessing to have you. Um, we now know what actually happened but the question then is, what do you do with that knowledge? We have to acknowledge the people that gave it to us and why. See, George Floyd is the Democratic Party's prototypical black man. These are the black men they are trying to create. So George Floyd has to be elevated. He has to be celebrated. He's perfect to them. He was poor. He was uneducated. He was a drug addict. He didn't have a job. He was, the, he was uh, uh, down there begging and... And, and crying and asking the white people to not kill him. To a Democrat, to a white Democrat, this is the perfect black man. So he has to be elevated. Look, not a, a few days ago, uh, Kamala Harris and uh, Joe Biden celebrated hip hop music. They had a celebration of hip hop. Hip hop culture is America's culture. It is a genre. It is music and melody and rhyme. And hip hop is also an ethos. A music genre that calls the black man the N word, calls women the W word and the B word, uh, talks about misogyny, shooting police, um, uh, uh, smoking dope, selling dope, 
fighting, killing, acting a the fool. They celebrated this genre. Why? Because this is how they see black America. They see us the same way they see George Floyd. And they have to make more of us because everywhere they rule, you know, John F. Kennedy stood in front of the um, uh, Berlin Wall in the 60s and said, if you think that communism is great, let them come to Berlin. Well, if you think that the Democratic Party is great, let them come to Detroit. Let them come to Chicago. Let them come to St. Louis. Let them come to L.A., Portland, Seattle, Memphis, anywhere where they rule. You will see George Floyd's all over the place. And they're proud of them in Baltimore, Maryland. They spend $21,000 per child for, for, for every child up there in, in, inside the school district. Not one school is proficient in math, science, or reading. But they keep it going every year. Why? Because they're producing George Floyd. But and George I, Floyd's we, we, vote for the Democrat you, Party. We, but why would, so when most of us, you, me, I think all normal people look at George Floyd's life, you think this is a disaster. This guy never added anything. He took a lot in prison at least eight times. I mean, his life was a tragedy at best. Why would you want more people like that? Because he votes for the Democrat Party. And then he teaches his children to vote for the Democrat Party. Uh, and then these white Democrats can feel superior to him. Yeah. He can be controlled by them. Just like, think about the old slave plantation, Tucker, back in the day. How they wanted their slaves to act. Subservient, obedient, ignorant. You know, uh, uh, doing what he was told. Not asking any questions, uh, having a slave mind, being dependent on them. This is how they want black men to be in America. This is how they want the whole black community to be. This is why uh, it started in the civil rights movement. When Martin Luther King Jr. in his I Have a Green speech said, 100 years after the Emancipation Proclamation, the Negro is still not free. He said five times in that speech that we were not free. It turned the Declaration of Independence on its head. Because in our Declaration of Independence, it said that our freedom was an unalienable right given us by God. John Locke in his Second Treatise of Government said that an unalienable right is a right given from God. It is irrevocable, non-transferable, and, unsell and, 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 and unsellable. The government cannot touch it. It supersedes law. It supersedes the Constitution. However, King said that we was coming to government and to the white man for our right to be free. Even at the end of the speech, he said, on some certain day, we'll be free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we're free at last. He said in that speech, when will we be satisfied? He said, we will never be satisfied until justice rolls down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. That's a fancy way of saying never. And so black people heard that speech and said that we were not free here in America. And we make our children recite that speech every single year on King's birthday. And they say in that speech, the Negro is still not free. George Floyd was a slave in his mind. And the civil rights movement caused him to be a slave in his mind. And today they're still marching, 60 years later. Don't hear people say the news is full of lies. Kennedy's motorcade. 239 people. The death of Jeffrey Epstein.